Uh, he'll be back with you next week. Now, a new Christian community in Leeds for addicts, ex-offenders and the homeless has now got its own mission priest. The Reverend John Swale set up the Lighthouse Network with others 18 months ago when he was a curate at St George's and he's now hoping to help people who don't feel comfortable in a regular church service. And Reverend John Swales, father of four, as he's just told me, joins me now. He says he goes to work for arrest and who can blame him. Um, tell us about this new community, John. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the Lighthouse is, is really church for those who are battered and bruised uh, by life. Life has many storms, storms of addiction, storms of homelessness, the storms of crisis in mental health. And we've, we've got a church for those who are in these storms, for people who have multiple and complex needs. And it's a great joy to be able to be the, the leader of the, of the group there. I suppose when we think about people with all these things going on in their lives, we don't automatically think that these are people who are going to be wanting to go to church, which is a terrible assumption. Well, it's not that you assume that, it's just not something that enters into the thought process, is it? Um, and yet, I would guess there's as many people there who want to worship uh, as there are who don't. Yep, so each, each week there's... There's about uh, 50 or 60 of us who, uh, who, who gather, gather on average with a, a, a service that lasts about an hour with sort of a um, full level of engagement. So an example of that would be during our service, we'll say, let's just take a moment, uh, let's just pause. What would you like to pray for? And then you'll say, OK, hands up. And people will just keep on putting their hands up. Sometimes we'll pray 15, 20 minutes where people will just be really honest about their own brokenness. They'll pray for... Can you pray for my kids who are in care? Can you pray for me to get off get off heroin? And there's a real honesty there. So it's a real uh, privilege to be able to be in such an honest, honest community. And it sounds like the, the very origins of what the church should be, really, or a community. A church doesn't need to be a physical thing, does it? Yeah. But that, that community where you're giving sanctuary and making people feel comfortable and safe enough to be able to voice those thoughts. Absolutely, this is something which is, uh, the church has been uh, doing for years. You go back, go back to Jesus. He was someone who really reached out to those who were broken, those who were on the margins. Um, you look in Leeds, uh, say the history of, of St George's Crypt. They've been doing this for years as well. Yes. And so there's a great, great heritage which I'm, we're, we're tapping into at Lighthouse. And, and generally, what kind of problems are you seeing? I mean, you must see some very difficult some people who have some very hard lifestyles and uh, maybe not necessarily of their choosing but the, having to deal with it that, that's abs uh, uh, absolutely right and I mean it's probably worth saying that it's a place of the joy and fun even a couple of weeks ago we had sort of a dance off during one of our services lots of fun mm -hmm. but in the last couple of months we've uh, you know we've had uh, buried, buried free or, or, or we've had mm -hmm. free funeral services of, of people who've taken their own lives or died through oh. complications of of drug addiction. Yeah. Um, what a typical story would be: someone who's um, perhaps uh, been homeless. They might have a flat, but it's not really a home. Um, they're struggling to uh, manage their own uh, money. They're struggling to manage uh, to manage their own emotions. But behind all this is a real a story of trauma. These people have been through the the war zone all, almost from birth, almost from birth. Life is like a war zone. And we get to be able to say, you know what, there's someone who offers peace, hope and, and joy in the midst of life storms. And I guess you're having people, I might be wrong about this, but people who don't actually have any faith as such, but, you know, the very fact that you will give them support and succour, if you like, um, will make this an attractive place for them to go to. That's right, there's real, there's real variety in, in the people who come along to uh, Lighthouse. Uh, some people who have gone to other churches but have never felt um, that the, it was right for them and never right that you know they've maybe struggled with levels of uh, literacy yes etc etc and then there's other people who've come along to lighthouse for uh, just a bit, a bit of food because we have a community meal as well and at the end of the service say look can I pray for you and the person will say yeah that's fine can you pray I'll get off heroin and then you pray for them yeah and that some the penny drops something happens and that person then enters into a journey of of recovery and they Time and time again, there are people having powerful sort of spiritual experiences as they come along to Lighthouse. Well, I'm using language of coming to us. Sometimes we go to them as well. So sometimes yeah. we'll go to the uh, 
go to parks or we'll go to sort of a rough pubs or into you know a house full of sort of those in addiction yeah. to, to share some of the good news which we, yeah. we believe we have well it's certainly good news if you're helping people you know find a way through what must be a horrendous way to live your life but this is the direct opposite when we think of vicars with nice cosy parishes we think of the vicar of dibley and a three christmas lunches and all those very cosy images that we have uh, this is a far cry this must be much more challenging work for you than than a very cosy parish where the the vicar is part of the church uh, is part of the community um this really challenging what what was it made you want to do this kind of work um i think it was really i used to be a high school teacher in in, in the south of leeds and really got a, a heart for those uh, who were maybe brought brought up on the more uh, tougher side of town and as I became a vicar, I, I did wonder, was it going to be sort of tea on the lawn with vicar, playing a bit of croquet? But I really felt the Lord saying, no, no, that the church should be um, less like a cruise ship and more like a rescue ship. So really going, trying to target those who are, are battered and bruised and broken by life and show them uh, some of the sort of love of Jesus. There's big demands. It's a big, big challenge, but it's also a huge, a huge privilege. Do you think, uh, I'm going to be very personal here, and I hope you're not offended by it. Go for it. Probably p- uh, politically incorrect on every level, but you look very, very young. Now, you've told me you have four children, so that's amazed me for a start, but you could just be a young lad. I hope you're not offended by that. Most people would say, yeah, but that yeah. your youthful appearance must help you when you're going out sometimes amongst these uh, these areas of, of of the community because people will not make assumptions about you, whereas if you're an older person and you're a vicar, they might think, oh, well, what does he know about life? But because you're young, maybe people find it easier to relate to. I think there's some, there's some advantages to uh, looking a bit younger. I also think even my accent can help you know that I, I don't come across as kind of the posh stereotypical uh, a vicar In, instead um, a bit more uh, down to earth I'll sit with people on the, on, the, on the side of the street I think wearing a collar helps as well yeah so often in situations of conflict if I'm there with a collar it actually doesn't put me in sort of a, um, a position where people will be fierce by you know want to be aggressive or anything. Are there ever moments where your faith is tested because of something you've seen have you ever sat with someone and thought this is so hard i don't know how i can keep doing this uh, um uh, absolutely Let me, one quick story i get a, i get a text message saying john i'm going to chapel i'll see you on the other side i then go to chapel the guy's not there and um i text him and he says i'm at home i'm my last cup of tea so i run round uh i r- run round his house with my uh, uh fellow pastor uh, called millie and we go there no answer, the police kick the door in and the guy has taken his own life. And this is someone who previous, we'd only baptized me a few weeks before. And so later on I go in, I'm gathered around the body and I anoint his head with oil. And I say the Lord's prayer with him. And at times like that, your heart, you know, you, you, you do cry out, you know, you cry out. And, and so learning to- You must to question, la- you must ask why. Learning to lament, I mean, G- Jesus, Jesus, when he was uh, dying, it says in the gospels that he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, and if Jesus can, can pray prayers like that, then I do as well. And so I've actually learned to lament, learned to, learned, learned to weep uh, in this role. And then you go home to your four children and you become dad and you have to deal with all the very different kind of problems that they bring as well. And yeah, joys. Yeah, and th- joys. that's right. And it, it needs to be said, this is re- it's really a family thing. Although my wife and sort of kids don't come along to light, Lighthouse for, for, for obvious, uh, obvious reasons, actually Lighthouse is a part of their... It's a part of their journey as well, yes, and, there's, yeah. and and there really is there's, there's a cost for us as a family because, you know, when we're at a, when we're at the Vicar factory, we would think we could imagine ourselves in a certain a certain way yes, of doing things, yeah. and actually that that life isn't there now. We're doing yes. something completely different, but we're we're confident that this is where uh, uh, well, God would have us be, be mm-hmm. and. Uh, despite the pain, there's immense joy as well. There's something beautiful is something beautiful is happening. Well, that's good to hear. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be talking to our um, guests on the panel in a little while.